Hello everyone, that's a uh, service mesh with STU series. We have here a GitHub page that you can follow from Raul Ray, our speaker, and you have all the demos that you can clone this repo. You also have the Catacoda um, course. You can just click, we are going through all the scenarios. You can also get the Docker image used by the demos on the Docker Hub, Fast Track STO. Hello everyone, we're back here with Raul and Fernando for the uh, next episode talking about service discovery. That's the service mesh series. Welcome Fernando and Raul. Hi George, hi Raul. Hi George, hi Fernando. Yes, great, great to guys have you back. Please follow us and uh, on, on Twitter, follow us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and Straight to Raul to start talking about service discovery. Thanks a lot, George. So if you have been following along with us, we are now going to cover exercise number six in Catacoda. Uh, so you can play with the scenario on your own while I would demo the scenario on AKS. So let's talk about uh, service discovery in STO. So what I specifically want to talk about uh, is how you can uh, make an external service that is totally outside the mesh. Uh, how can you can implement traffic management policies on uh, uh, such services? So to your mesh, any service that is running within your mesh, an external workload that is not even part of the mesh would seem as if it is just another service running within the mesh. So if you remember the architecture that uh, we have uh, of the book club application that we have been working through in this video. You would remember that uh, we have deployed one of the services called the independent service outside the mesh. And uh, what we want to do here is we want to onboard that service and implement traffic management policies on it. Till this point, uh, that service, even though it was addressable because we haven't blocked uh, access to any external services within the mesh. Uh, we weren't we weren't actually applying any of the Istio traffic management uh, policies on it. So in order to bring a service that is uh, hosted outside the mesh, make it an an integral part of the mesh, the API that uh, we will use is called Service Entry. So what Service Entry does is that it will add a DNS record of the externally hosted service in your uh, in the Istio service registry. Note that uh, when it adds this record, it doesn't actually modify any uh, DNS uh, services. For example, core DNS is the default DNS uh, uh, service available in Kubernetes. You won't find a new record getting created in that. It's just a setting that lives uh, in Envoy. So with this service, you can not only onboard the services that are outside the cluster to your mesh, but you can also onboard the services that are running in the Kubernetes cluster but are not part of the mesh. You can uh, make it uh, seem as if those services are part of the mesh as well and apply traffic management policies on it. So all of the policies that we uh, went through in the demos such as retries, timeouts, and uh, circuit breakers, we would be able to apply all of these policies to our externally hosted services. So let's quickly jump on to the demo. I will resume from the point uh, where we left. So you can see that uh, my Kubernetes cluster is up and running, and it has uh, all the Kubernetes services uh, running at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm uh, going to jump to the terminal. First, delete my namespace so that we can start afresh. And while that goes on, let me quickly take you to uh, the, uh, the specifications that we are going to apply this time. So what we are going to do is we are going to add a new service entry record for the independent service, which is hosted outside the cluster on an Azure uh, on an ACI instance or Azure Container instance that is uh, running in a in one of the subscriptions for this demo. Uh, 
So let's go through the specifications quickly. So the first part of the specification declares the namespace. Uh, since it is an Istio enabled namespace, uh, you would see that uh, we have added the label Istio injection enabled to it, uh, which would instruct Istio to add a sidecar to any of the services uh, that we deploy under this namespace. Next, we add a new service entry record. Here you will see that uh, we have specified a host. So this host name is that of uh, the independent service, which is uh, running outside the cluster. Uh, you uh, should specify the location of the service now. So it can have two values. Mesh, mesh external denotes that the service is uh, present outside the cluster. Another value is mesh internal, which denotes that the service is running uh, inside, the, inside the cluster, but outside the mesh. Uh, how these policies, uh, how the location affects the policies is that uh, if for any mesh external services, some of the uh, traffic management policies, for example, TLS termination doesn't work, uh, whereas it would for mesh internal services. Next, you specify the port details and how the service should be resolved. So uh, this service is addressable on uh, accessible on port number 8080 on uh, with HTTP protocol. So those are the specifications there. The resolution type can be of two types. Uh, this one is DNS, which means that Istio will use the ambient DNS, which is uh, core DNS in order to resolve this uh, address. So a quick recap on uh, how address resolution works is that uh, your DNS service has uh, uh, has an IP address mapping for uh, yeah, a, a name of the service. So this name would be propagated, taken to core DNS uh, to resolve an IP address of the service. Since core DNS doesn't uh, know about the service at all, that request will be forwarded to the Azure's DNS and uh, Azure DNS would be able to return the IP address of this service because this domain name belongs to Azure. Finally, uh, even though these settings are sufficient to onboard the service on the mesh, what we also want to do is apply a traffic uh, management policy uh, to this service. So uh, what, uh, in order to play with this service, what we are going to do is we are going to also add a destination rule to it. If you look at it, uh, what this destination rule is trying to do is for this particular host, which is the externally hosted service, it will add a traffic policy. So what this traffic policy is doing is uh, it, whenever you make a request to this service instance, it will try to see whether a cookie exists. Uh, and if it does not, it will create a cookie, but it will use that cookie value to always route the request to uh, the same instance of uh, the externally hosted service. So think of it as a cookie based uh, routing policy uh, in load balancer. So just like if you want to always route your request to the same instance of the service, use a consistent cookie and uh, let the load balancer know about it. And thus the load balancer would be able to resolve uh, the request to the same instance every time. Uh, so how we are going to test this service is using a busybox uh, pod. So busybox is a utility service, which you would uh, most often use to debug uh, services running in Kubernetes. So say you have a few services running, but uh, some of the services are not able to resolve the addresses of others, then you can uh, place a busy box pod in your uh, mesh for that matter in your cluster and uh, use the networking tools that are built within busy box in order to debug uh, any issues with uh, the communication aspect of service to service communication. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will first apply this uh, busy box service to my VM, uh, to my cluster. So what this specification does is it creates a namespace and it creates the busy box pod. 
once this uh, pod has been created, what I'm going to do is use this uh, BusyBox pod to make a request to the independent service. So till now, I haven't uh, applied any traffic management policies uh, on the on the independent service. So what we will see is the raw uh, output that uh, the external service generates. So you can see here that uh, originally this independent service doesn't return any cookies. It doesn't set any cookies in the response and you simply get the response back from the service, which is this one. So now let's put a load balancer in front of this, uh, in front of the independent service uh, via Istio. So what we are going to do is apply the spec that we spoke about earlier. And uh, you would notice that it added a new service entry instance and a destination rule instance. So now we are going to execute the same request again from the same BusyBox pod and uh, we'll study uh, how Istio modifies the request and adds cookie based routing to the request without uh, us having to change the code of uh, the independent service. So for that, I will again run the same command. This time, if you see the response returns with a cookie set, which has a hash value uh, computed by Istio. So every time we send the same request uh, with the same uh, user cookie value, it would resolve to the same IP address uh, that Istio used to route request to the independent service. So this is how you uh, onboard services that are not part of the mesh to the mesh and apply traffic management policies on them. We just now saw one of the traffic policies being applied, but you can apply any other policies that we spoke about earlier, for example, fault injection or uh, uh, Kennedy deployments or any other such policies on externally hosted services as well. Thank you. Thank you, Raul. Just a quick question. How, if the other service, there is no sidecar, how that works? So, uh, since all of these policies get applied to uh, the Envoy proxy, uh, if you uh, recall from the diagram that we saw in the presentation earlier, that Sidecar is able to intercept all incoming and outgoing traffic. So these policies get applied to the outbound traffic of the application. So when the application is trying to make a request to this uh, API endpoint, the Sidecar will intercept it and apply these policies there. That's great. I think the next the next video, next we're going to talk about security, then you probably can go a little bit deeper and explain how that works. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando, yes. and thank hey, you, Raul. Thank you, Raul. And one little thing, I'm following along here using the Catacode course, and it's working well. And it's, with this video, it's very well explained what I'm doing here on Catacode. Thank you, Raul. Thank you. If you want to follow Raul Ray, uh, our speaker, just go for his blog, thecloudblog.net. There's a lot of blogs here, a lot of content. You can see links for his uh, books. One of the books is the S2 book, just released a few months ago. It's a very nice one. I really like the Kubernetes one as well. Have had a look before. And also, Raul is one of our bloggers and mentors. There's a few blogs here on azureta.com. Please follow our uh, blog. And Raul is here as a, uh, one of our main mentors. Thank you all for following and helping the, the community is all about helping others to publish content. Thank you.